We know of Matthew Perry's expedition to open up Japan for trade with the world after its self-imposed isolation, but it almost seems like a random note in history. One may ask, why Japan, and why bother them? Why did Perry show up with such a huge display of military might and bravado to try and intimidate the Shogun? And was Japan really closed off completely? First of all, I can go on a longer video of Perry's expedition later, but today we'll cover the background leading up to the expedition. Quickly. First of all, why did Japan close? Due to numerous reasons. One was nearby Spanish and Portuguese influences in Asia, and the news from English and Dutch merchants of how the Iberians forcefully spread religion in the New World to help the conquest. A rebellion of 40,000 Christian Japanese peasants in 1637 only reinforced the matter. Two, the Takagawa shogunate had just wrapped up decades of war against competing daimyo, some of whom had traded with foreigners for weapons and wealth. Closing down trade from the outside world would place the shogunate as the main political power of Japan and stop other potential challengers from gaining any strength or influence. Third, the port city of Nagasaki was open to foreign trade, but regulated. Dutch merchants were allowed in because they agreed to keep the trade and religion separate, allowing the Japanese to gain some firearms and books on medical practices. Also, through outlying islands like Shishima, diplomatic ties with Korea were held intact, allowing for Chinese technology and news to be ferried back to Edo. So while Japanese subjects couldn't leave and foreigners couldn't move in, Japan wasn't totally closed off from the outside world. But by the 19th century, the outside world was increasingly finding itself moving into Japanese waters. For the United States, it had increased its trading with Asia by this time and felt that it needed to catch up with European merchants in the area. Japan seemed like a good stop on the way to China. American ships first traded in Nagasaki for the Dutch due to the problems the latter was having with Napoleon in the early 1800s. American businessman Charles King in 1837 tried to return some Japanese sailors who had been shipwrecked off of Washington, an extraordinary story in itself. But King's ship was fired upon by Japanese batteries and was not able to establish any diplomatic contact. Nine years later, in 1846, Commodore James Biddle arrived on a diplomatic mission by Araga, just a few miles away from the Shogunate in Edo. Although not fired upon, probably because his two ships were packing more than 70 big guns, Biddle was formally rejected. But in 1848, James Glenn, a veteran of the Mexican-American War, commander in the U.S. East India Squadron, heard that American and Hawaiian whalers were imprisoned in Japan after a shipwreck. After gaining orders and supplies, he sailed from Hong Kong with his ship, the Preble, in 1849. Sailing to Nagasaki, Glenn's ship was attempted to be blocked by a few Japanese vessels, but Glenn forced his ship past them without firing a shot and anchored in the harbor. He was not leaving without the prisoners and threatened that the U.S. would make war on Japan if they tried firing upon him. With the help of Dutch merchants as interpreters, the prisoners who were still alive after their internment were released to Glenn after nine days. It was the first successful negotiation between the two countries, although a tense one. Afterwards, Glenn recommended that the US government make more diplomatic missions to Japan and to use force if necessary, as that seemed to work over Commodore Biddle's more peaceful approach. This led to the larger, more brazen expedition of Matthew Perry in 1853. This has been Fast History with Eric the Lone Pine Wolfman, and remember, never stop learning.